One of the most typical kinds of weaknesses, of pawn weaknesses, uh, is doubled pawns. Uh, so this is probably one of the first things people think of when they think of pawn, pawn weaknesses or weaknesses of the pawn structure. Uh, the fact that uh, one pawn is behind another one means that they can't protect each other, uh, especially if they're isolated. But even if they have a neighboring pawn that can protect one of them, it usually it can't protect both. In most cases, uh, one of them can become weak. Especially, it also um, tends to tends to inhibit the mobility of the pawns because uh, if they advance, then one of the pawns uh, is left behind. That said, past doubled pawns are not always weak, and we will discuss that in this course as well when they are not weak. Um, so to illustrate uh, a relatively simple example of uh, taking advantage of doubled pawn, weak pawn weaknesses due to the doubled pawns in the position, we'll see this, uh, this game uh, Yevgeny Agrest versus Alexander Mor uh, Morozevich from 2004, uh, Calvia 2004. Uh, it was black to play. Uh, the game quickly had gone into the end game directly after the opening. Black plays his pieces very well, uh, despite the fact that he had to lose castling rights. Uh, he has a very harmonious position, and now he made a decision. Bishop takes c3. Uh, creating doubled pawns in white's position at the cost of giving up uh, the dark squared bishop. This is a trade-off that happens many times in chess. Certain openings it's even almost expected, like in the Nimzo Indian defense, for instance. This happens very often, that black gives up the bishop for the doubled pawns. And it's uh, not always easy to make the decision of whether the doubled pawns will be the more relevant uh, feature of the position or the two bishops. But here, uh, it uh, seems very clear that uh, black will create real problems for white in defending the doubled pawns, which are also isolated. Meanwhile, white's not uh, going to be able to get the kind of play with the dark squares that he wants. In particular, there aren't uh, real targets in black's position. The position is fairly closed, and this pawn on f4 is rather blocking white's dark squared bishop. So. Now to continue attacking the pawn, uh, Black's first thing was to um, tie White's pieces down to its defense. And now he also needs to uh, take care that he covers the dark squares, especially c4. I mean d4 rather. And another thing is that uh, one defect of Black's position from the start was the rook on a8, and this has to be taken care of before Black uh, tries to do too much. So knight a5. Now Morozevich played. This attacks c4 and also opens up a way for black to consolidate his position and bring the rook on a8 into the game. So the pawn on c4 is really attacked. White has to defend it because black will happily take, especially with the bishop on c4, most important. For instance, knight to d4, tempting move which white would like to play, would allow bishop takes c4. And white really has no compensation for the pawn now. Um, the, especially if the light squared bishops are exchanged, black would be very happy to do that. But in any case, white doesn't have any kind of play on the, using the two bishops. So white protected the pawn with knight to d2. And here Marozevich made a, an instructive move. He played the move c5. So he is um, blockading the pawn and fixing it. And he fixes the structure, making it more closed. Uh, and he prepares then also to play b6 and king c7 and bring the rook into the game from a8. So he's not in a hurry. Uh, so c5 was an important move, which not everyone would probably want to play. For one thing, often the square in front of the pawn, doubled pawns, in other words c5, can be a move can be used for um, for the other side's pieces because besides the weakness of the double pawns themselves often the square in front of them is also weak because as you can see white has no pawn that can cover c5 however using the c5 square is not so effective in this position and one thing is white can challenge that square with bishop a3 sometimes knight to b3 as well another very tempting move though is knight to b6 which further attacks the pawn on c4 and white has no way to defend it anymore. And if he pushes the pawn to c5, then the pawn will probably fall on c5 as well. For instance, here there's even knight a4 attacking pawns on c5 and c3. 
Uh, but Morozevich made a good decision to avoid this because this would actually allow white's pieces to become active. We have the move knight to b3, which is also very typical in this kind of structure, uh, challenging the knight on a5 and thus forcing black to um, to take the pawn on c4 with, uh, with the knight rather than the bishop. If the bishop were to capture on c4, then there would be the move bishop to g4 check, and the knight on a5 is hanging, so things get more. Well, black would have to play f5 just to save material, and then white would get the pawn back, and we'd be absolutely fine. So, meanwhile, if black takes on b3, of course, this is an enormous improvement in white's pawn structure, and this would be the kind of position where doubled pawns are actually useful for white. White's position would suddenly go from much worse to actually better here, because c4 is well protected, so even though the doubled pawns remain, they're no longer isolated. And c3 is the only pawn that can't be defended. So it's not possible, though, for black to reach c3 pawn. So white will never play b4, or basically will never play b4, except if there's a major change in the structure, which would then make c4 once again weak. But instead just leaves the pawns like this, and now has two bishops without really having these weaknesses, and meanwhile he can use the A file, which is a file that the doubled pawn gives white an open A file. So bishop E3, rook A5, doubling the rooks there, for instance, many, many things, and white's position is very good. So of course, knight takes B3 as a move no player should consider in such a position. Uh, black would take with one of the knights on C4, probably, let's say the A knight, but this would allow white some counterplay, like knight to d4, maybe knight to c5. Uh, and black has an extra pawn, but it's uh, it's much more uh, tricky uh, position because white has uh, still has the op has the two bishops and his knights getting into the game. Uh, and black, meanwhile, is playing without the rook on a8. It's really hard to see a, a, an easy way to make make uh, room to bring the, the king up and then bring the rook into the game. Meanwhile, the open b file could be of use to white, especially with a4, uh, threatening a5 coming up in the future. So it's it's very, uh, it makes things much more difficult. And Morozevich made an excellent choice by playing c5 instead, not hurrying, but just closing down white's possibilities. So white is stuck defending this c4 pawn. If knight to b3 now, black can take on c4. Um, black can take on c4 with a bishop, because if not, not knight takes because of f5, but bishop takes c4, and now the bishop on e2 is hanging. So this would give black the the extra pawn and not uh, um, without giving white any real counterplay. There would be opposite colored bishops after knight takes a5, bishop takes e2. But black should, uh, there's plenty of material on the board, and white has further weaknesses in addition to black's extra pawns, so I think black should have uh, very good chances of winning. Um, so instead, white played bishop a3, a move which might be a little bit called into question, but it's hard to find moves for white, and he does want to force black to play b6, so that that square is blocked for the knight, and it, he thinks that it will be harder perhaps to for black to win the pawn later, but it's okay. So bishop also on a3 is not going to be very well placed. Black played king c7, uh, making room for the rook to come in. White played rook, H, uh, rook a to e1. Uh, he tries to defend various points, and his, his main counterplay is to try to play f5. So he wants to prepare some time for the opening of the f file. Black played now b6, rook h to f1. White wants to play f5 now. And so now another very strong move by Morozevich, f5. Uh, this move shuts down white's possibilities. Further, very typical in these kinds of positions. Uh, the e pawn, or the f pawn rather, is blocked on f4 so that white's bishop remains in its trap, in its cage. c5 pawn is well guarded, so it's never, white will never be able to open up that way, and now the bishop on c1 will have no prospects. Uh, so this renders white's two bishop advantage pretty useless. And of course, white can create a passed e pawn. Uh, he can play e5 here, but this would take all of the dynamicism out of the position and leave white with weaknesses. And meanwhile, the e pawn is uh, very well blocked, and the position is completely, uh, the pawn is very well blockaded, and the position is completely blocked. Uh, 
So black has all the time in the world to arrange different maneuvers. I would suggest one way black might, and there are of course many possibilities, and g5 also comes into the equation, the advanced g6 to g5, which uh, could undermine white center. I wouldn't do it immediately if I had the black pieces here. I would make a lot of preparations because white has no counterplay whatsoever. So first thing I think would be to bring the rook to the d-file. The knight from d7 is going to go to another square. Uh, there are various possibilities. e6 is always, of course, a nice possibility, but you have to be careful not to allow white's bishop to d5 in that case. But still, uh, something like this, probably uh, knight f8, rook h7 to d7. Doubling the rooks is going to put a lot of pressure on white because the knight on d2 has to stay there to guard the pawn on c4. White bishop will have trouble ever moving from e2 because he also has to guard the pawn on c4. So black can double the rooks and then and then perhaps uh, g5 and knight g6 is one possibility to make progress. Uh, sometimes black can move the bishop from e6 and then bring the knight into e6 there uh, where it will attack f4. So the different ways of playing, but uh, white has no counterplay and black has many ways to make progress. Such a position strategically hopeless, I think. So uh, Agres played bishop d3, trying to keep the tension in the position, uh, keeping the e-file uh, with the possibility of opening the e-file. Rook h to e8, black prepares to challenge the e-file if white captures. Now, of course, if white takes, then black can take with the bishop. And the exchange of light squared bishops will be beneficial for black. And if we do this kind of thing, uh, black has a very stable positional advantage. Now the bishop on a3 is a disaster, just basically caught in a cage. The pawn on c4 is in constant need of protection. One way to win from here for black, well, I mean, there are many ways, but to bring the knight to e4 and simply remove white's knight from d2 and then win the c4 pawn is one way. Another way would be to bring the knight to d6 is another possibility, but in any case, this is very easy winning for black. Even you take all the rooks off the board and black should win very easily. So white didn't do that. Instead, he played bishop c1. The bishop was no longer had any future on a3. It never really did. Its just purpose was to induce b6. Now rook a to d8. So simply bringing a last piece into the game. White's pieces are all completely tied up, having to defend weak points, especially c4, but also e4 has to be held. Um, all black has to do is uh, just disturb white's uh, position a little bit, and it's uh, it's coming in a moment. The knight from d7 will deal the final blow. White played rook f3 here, defending the bishop on d3 in advance, and now knight f6. So here... Black is finally putting a last little bit of pressure on e4, forcing white to make a decision about this uh, pawn because uh, if black takes on e4, white's pieces will be deflected away from guarding c4 and uh, he'll lose a pawn and black's centralized rooks will also be well placed after that opening of the position. Uh, so meanwhile, if white plays e5, then knight h5 is just uh, crushing. Uh, black will eventually play g5 and undermine white's position and get the knight into f4. The knight will come to f4 ultimately, uh, and white's position will fall apart. And remember, always the whole problem is black has not won this pawn yet, but white has two pieces stuck guarding this pawn. And this is just completely destroying the coordination of his position and making it untenable entirely. So king f2 was uh, what Agres played, just trying to keep the tension. But now black wins a pawn, takes on e4, knight takes e4, and he played bishop takes c4. There are others you could take on e4, I suppose, as well. But uh, white was uh, planning to take back, I guess, with the rook. Uh, so bishop takes c4 was what Morozevich preferred. Now if white takes on c4, black takes on e4 with check. So white had to take on f6, rook takes e1, king takes e1, bishop takes d3. So the result is still opposite colored bishops, black wins the pawn, but the re resulting position is uh, completely hopeless for white still because black's pieces are uh, 
very well placed. And another important point is that uh, Black's Knight will come to the very strong c4 square. Uh, so this is a typical theme with doubled pawns. Even after the doubled pawn has disappeared, either if it's been either it's been won, or sometimes it can be traded off, there's usually a weak square remaining there. So this knight coming to c4 is going to help Black to win. White also has more weaknesses. All of his pawns are isolated, whereas none of Black's pawns are isolated. Uh, and the white king is somewhat in the firing line as well, so position is easily winning. White tried f5, opening up his bishop. Otherwise, black bishop comes to f5, and white remains with this awful bishop on c1. So it takes, bishop takes h6, and now rook h8. So this attacks the, the rook, and behind it the weakness on h3. White checked on f4, king c6, and now rook e3 hoping to get counterplay by rook e7. Uh, so black, uh, that's probably what white would do after rook takes uh, h3. Uh, instead black played this move rook h4, which was, uh, which was uh, leaving the pawn on h3 alone and instead going after the a pawn. So bishop goes to g3, rook h4, uh, rook a4. So rather than rook takes h3 which would uh, which would be possible but but put put the uh would put the the um, rook out of play uh, after maybe king f2 or something like that uh so but instead rook a4 uh, black goes to take the a pawn white went rook e7 again looking for counterplay if rook e2 black could just uh, grab the h pawn with the bishop and then remain with uh, then coming back later uh, bishop f5, knight c4, and so on, and black is up two pawns, and white continues to be tied to the a pawn. So passive play was clearly hopeless. Augurus played rook e7, trying to counterattack. Now knight to c4, black protects the a pawn on a7, and the knight moves to a very strong square where it's uh, uh, keeping uh, uh, keeping control over some important squares, and will even take part in a future attack on the white king. Rook c7, check king b5. Uh, rook takes h7, white gets a pawn, but now rook takes a2, and black's a pawn is uh, going to be a very powerful force. Knight to d5, a5, simply uh, continuing to run the pawn down the board, and with the support of black's, all of black's pieces, the pawn will be unstoppable. h4, bishop e4, knight c7, king a4, rook e7, Bishop f3, rook e6, king b3, black just moves in with his king, uh, rook takes g6, white um, decided to, I mean, after a4, a3, there was no chance, so he took this pawn, and after, but after rook e2, uh, white resigned, uh, since he is, uh, his own king is going to come into trouble. So obviously, if king d1, black has, uh, black has, um, Black has at minimum rook e6 check, winning the rook. Obviously, it should be it should be mate here. Also, um, if king f1, meanwhile, then black can play knight e3 check, king g1, rook e, rook g2 check, king h1, rook takes g3, etc. Uh, so, uh, so this was uh, I think pretty uh, pretty clear demonstration of uh, doubled pawn weakness. Uh, an important point to notice was that rather than immediately going to win the pawn by knight to b6, which would allow white activity with the double, with the two bishops and uh, and the open lines in exchange for being down a pawn, instead Morzevich preferred to uh, close the position down, improve his position patiently, and then later the pawns just White, the pawn fell uh, just of its own accord uh, due to its uh, organic weakness.